Hello and welcome to the release video for Aviva Enterprise SCADA 2023. This release contains some significant CRM functionality as well as several new extensibility options and is loaded with new developer documentation. It also introduces a new deployment topology. Enterprise SCADA 2023 is the first release that officially supports two operating systems at release, Windows Desktop LTSC 2019 and 2022, as well as Windows Server 2019 and 2022 Desktop and Core. This release also sees an upgrade of Visual Studio to version 2022 and .NET 4.8. We will see later in this video demonstrations of some of the new CRM and extensibility functionality, including system alarm routing, which greatly increases the administrator's ability to customize what system alarms their operators see, as well as some advanced routing and handoff functionality. There are significant improvements to the smooth trend indicator, and new extensibility for station rollups. We have made a significant step forward in our alarm management and are introducing extended data quality, which lays the groundwork for the intelligent midstream. This release contains the largest increase in developer documentation, as well as a brand new ADE developer guide. As usual, we have increased our product security score and have introduced several new extensibility features. Migration of the development environment setup scripts to the global practice team will allow them to customize the development environment to the evolving best practices that they are maintaining for our integrators. The high performance data export framework can be used to develop solution specific plugins to exfiltrate data securely from the real time system in a way that exceeds both PubSub and OPC performance and will be used as a foundation for new interfaces like Pi as well as a new exception collect plugin scheduled for release next year. Okay, without further ado, let's take a look at some of the new features in Enterprise SCADA 2023. In very large systems, it has become common to horizontally scale the telemetry across multiple real times. Before now, that would mean that each real time pair would be accompanied by a historical pair. At the extreme, with three horizontally scaled real time systems and replicas at the backup control center, this would total six SQL clusters. This represents a significant additional cost. Enterprise SCADA 2023 introduces single historian with multiple real times, which is a significant new deployment topology. Now the horizontally scaled real times can share a single historical pair, which uses a single SQL cluster. This is made possible through new service types called the historical subordinate and historical principle. The historical subordinate does not have to have a SQL instance and instead sends their historical data to the historical principal. This means that they also do not run data pump. The historical principal is responsible for data summarization and data pump. This new productized topology reduces the total number of servers needed, thereby reducing the total cost of ownership. The persistent connection socket enhancement is for those remotes that have multiple connections defined. Currently, the system only maintains the socket for the currently active connection. Here we see a remote with three connections configured. The remote is fresh, as is only one of its connections. This means that remote poll protocols where the host maintains the socket, but it is the remote that is sending unsolicited data, the protocol is only able to receive data on the active path. With this enhancement, all three connections remain active and connected. This means it is now possible for the protocol to receive data on any configured connection simultaneously. This is useful for those remote poll devices which may broadcast on multiple connections in the event that they are experiencing intermittent failures on one or more paths. The extended data quality enhancement results in more of the points metastate being collected into historical. In the past, Enterprise SCADA only considered eight flags from the real-time point from which it selected one to be included in the time series database. This flag could then be used to style the pen used in the trend object on the HMI. With this enhancement, the entire points metastate is collected, starting with 17 baseline flags and with support for an additional 13 user-defined flags to support additional metastate information for the point. These are combined into a new column in the collect table along with the legacy data quality to ease the transition of your existing screens, trends, and data analysis. Lastly, when trending a point with extended data quality, the user will configure the precedence of these flags. 
Using this precedence, the updated flexible trend object coming in the next release of the HMI will style the pin according to the highest precedence found in the collected data. Smooth Trend Indicator was first released in Enterprise SCADA 2022. Different from a rate of change, the calculation which drives this icon is a differential first-order logarithmic filter. Its purpose is to drive the trend indicator image presented in the flexible analog indicator HMI object with a smoothed representation of the trending direction the point is experiencing. On the left, we see the result of the smoothing filter. On the right, we see the result when the indicator is driven directly from a rate of change calculation. The chart on top is showing the current value of the point. The chart below is showing the historical representation of the two trend indicator icons from the corresponding HMI objects. The orange line, representing the indicator as driven by the rate of change, is quite erratic, while the purple line, representing the smoothed indicator, is less distracting to the operator. Enterprise SCADA 2023 was enhanced to bring this functionality to rate points as well as making the indicator calculation independent of the polling frequency. This is important for aperiodic data, as well as ensuring accuracy during a communications outage. System alarm routing enables the administrator to create filters based on alarm message, process, and host name. Here, we are going to filter for the change of state alarm for the archive service. The filter can then be configured to apply overrides to the alarm, such as category, group, and station. The alarm can also be inhibited so that the operator never sees it. This can be used in conjunction with the routing option. Here, the administrator can configure a custom pub sub topic that is emitted when the alarm is raised. This enables a custom application to listen for this pub sub topic and then take an action. For example, triggering an external process or reissuing a different alarm according to the customer's specific requirements. As you'd expect, these overrides present to the operator in the alarm summary, which can be filtered to show only those system alarms you choose. They also appear in the event summary, which will now also show which alarms were inhibited from being presented. The DBLL audit trail enhancement results in any changes to or creation of real-time points to be captured in the configuration audit log. Here we see the user has used the DBLL tool to extract the configuration for an analog point to use as the starting point for a new point. After saving the file and using the DBLL tool to safe load the updated file, we can then check the audit log to see that the new point was correctly recorded. Going back to the file they just used, the user can then modify an existing field and then safe load that into the database. Once again, using the configuration audit log summary screen to see that there is now a modification entry reflecting the change they just made. The station rollup extensibility enhancement makes it possible to roll up alarms from any table to the station object. To do this, all one needs to do is to add the station field to the table as part of its keys. In this example, we've added station to ACE config and connection, which are baseline tables, as well as a new custom table. After running schema converter, we are ready to demonstrate the alarm rollup. For the connection table, we'll simulate a line failure by resetting the protocol simulator. Next, we've prepared some ACE code that throws an exception, and we'll go ahead and activate it. Lastly, we'll use the BLT test client to raise an alarm against a point in our custom table. Switching to the alarm summary screen, we see our three alarms, each of which show the appropriate station. Taking a look at the station, site, and region summaries, we see that these alarms have been correctly rolled up. The alarm dictionary contains a complete list of all of the alarms that can be generated by enterprise SCADA and pipeline operations for gas products. The file is a machine-readable CSV file that can be imported into third-party alarm analysis and management tools. Here, we see a selection from the much longer list. The file contains information on the real-time table it is raised against, or system if it is a system alarm, the category of the alarm, and the ResX ID can be used to create localized translations of the alarm. 
The message info set ID, which is how some alarms have their severity changed, is also listed. And the template, which describes the alarm text and is combined with parameters such as point name and current value when it is raised. The severity, as defined by baseline, is listed, as is the best way to modify it. Lastly, there are some usability notes. A quick update on deprecations. In Enterprise SCADA 2023, the use of DNA registry has now been completely removed from baseline and will not be available for third parties in the next release. Also, the legacy Modbus driver has been completely removed and all customers will now use the extended Modbus driver. As part of our continuous security improvements, we've deprecated several unsafe string and buffer functions, as well as some legacy C++ time macros. In ADE, we've deprecated the validation regex attribute in favor for the validation regex plugin. For PubSub, we've deprecated some low-level client-side topic filters that were not used and were not well documented in favor of the more efficient subscription callback method. Okay, on to some new documentation. Our Tech Pubs group has been very busy adding to the already four new document sets from the previous release with three new developer documentation sets that were added in this release. A guide and API reference for the new high performance data export framework, a detailed developer guide and new API reference for the BLT subsystem, a new comprehensive ADE developer guide, and lastly, a new execution pipeline API reference. The new ADE developer guide was developed in conjunction with our global practice team and contains detailed instructions and examples of all of the various ways to customize and enhance the advanced database editor. Integrators are now equipped to take full advantage of ADE to build the best administrator experience for their add-ons and applications. New extensibility layers in this release include the new High Performance Data Export Framework, or HBDEF. It ties into the set layer and is a queue-based plugin architecture for the highest possible output from real-time. Plugins will register for the tables and points that they are interested in, and the queue system will deliver both the new and old copies of the record whenever it is unlocked. Combined with double buffering, this framework will exceed the existing PubSub layer for raw output and easily outstrips the OPC connection. This framework will be used in the next release for a revamped collect subsystem to enable exception collection of any field in the database. We also anticipate its use by integrators for high throughput, low latency applications such as leak detection and other AI-based applications that require a veritable firehose of real-time updates. And that concludes our video. Thanks for watching.